All right, so first up, um, I took a look at uh, the Chicago Bears. I mean, that the uh, preseason game with Justin Fields, he made a couple splash plays. He made a really great play. You know, it's interesting to see what the ability to run does to a defense in their reactions and stuff. I mean, that one touchdown pass he had, where he threw it back across and the, the tight end that caught it basically walked backwards into the end zone. To me, it was so perfectly set up by his running. So when he looks like he's going to do something that that defense really got focused in on. Now, again, they probably backups and everything, but they were focused and that really sucked them all in on that play. Um, just so happened when I was looking, they're still looking at Andy Dalton as a starter in front of him. And strangely enough, Nick Foles, behind him and I just thought man between Andy Dalton and Nick Foles when I look at the two of them 29 years of NFL experience that that rookie has an opportunity to to just you know pull as much as he can from what do you think about that uh as far as the experience that's in the room with him that he can pull from I think that's a great thing uh, Nick Foles, I'm sure, can tell him a lot. Uh, Nick Foles has a Super Bowl ring. He started in the Super Bowl and beat the Patriots. Uh, he's been around. Andy Dalton can talk to him about, you know, being a young player, coming in, expecting to have to start right away and be named the, fa the, the, face, be named the face of the franchise early on and the highs and lows that come with that. Uh, so yeah, sure. There's, there's a lot of information to be garnered from, from all that experience, but the bottom line is if you look at skill sets, Justin Fields potentially has the greatest skill, skill set of the three of them. Um, Nagy has foals there because he was there before he's a reliable backup. He's played his best ball as a backup not as a starter, uh, not as a full-time starter over a season. Um, and he's got Andy Dalton there to start. And until Justin Fields either proves in practice and in film study that he's completely ready, because he's already physically ready, but he's completely ready, ready mentally, they won't even consider putting him in. But what their timetable actually is, is hard to say. The coach is not going to let you know that. He's not going to say, as soon as Andy stubs his toe, I'm going to put Justin in there. He's not going to say, if Andy goes down in week two, <laughs> I'm going to pull put Justin in. He's not going to – has he even mentioned who's number two and who's number three? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think and he has either. They're, they're really playing that game tight, you know, Absolutely. to the rest. Now. And Absolutely. Which is, I would do the same thing. They're yeah. going to be caught. I, I would do the same thing because you don't want to give out too much information because the media is going to run with every single thing you say. If you say, um, I expect that going into week one, uh, Andy Dalton is our unquestioned starter and Justin Fields will be the backup and Nick Foles will be number three. If you say that, they're going to take that and they're going to twist that into a whole nother story. If you say the opposite, if you say uh, Nick Foles is the backup and Justin Fields will be number three, what that means to the media is Justin Fields isn't going to get many snaps. As a starter, hardly any, if any, and as a backup, barely any. And they would think, well, how smart is that? This guy's a first round pick. You know what I mean? So they're going to, yeah, I would, if I was him, I just, I wouldn't say any more than I've already said. Andy Dalton's my starter until I say he's not. That's it. Well, it's an interesting group of, uh, or um, profile types of quarterback with Andy Dalton being more of your pocket quarterback. So, I mean, if you were to learn anything, Justin, is that pocket work, you know, from an Andy Dalton, if I'm watching him in the pocket, you know, assuming that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing in the pocket. Um, but the other thing that I think might be really interesting 
is to see Justin Fields. I don't know how good he is at RPOs, but if there was one thing Nick Foles could do, it was run an RPO. And I remember we talked about that in that Super Bowl run, and I didn't really feel at the time that the defenses were really prepped to handle the RPO that was coming from Nick Foles. You know, back in the day when he first came in, you had, you know, just the, the run option. Then everybody realized Nick Foles couldn't actually run. So the RPO was like the next best thing where it wasn't Nick that was threatening to run. It was him threatening to hand the ball off, looking like kind of like a play action. But really, as an RPO, you know, he's looking not so much just to fake the handoff, but to but really to, to read, you know, that uh, that line and then make that decision at the line of scrimmage. You know, am I going to hand this ball off or am I going to get this pass off to somebody else more so than, um, you know, a, a play action where you fake it and drop back and all of that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think that that would be an interesting skill set that he could glean from uh, Nick Foles because he was very good at that, you know. So it would be interesting. You know, he could potentially come out of this really richly um, educated. I'll say it that way, you know, if you were able to take advantage of that. Okay.